Hi, I'm Dr. Mohamed Mikati. I am the uh, Chief of Pediatric Neurology at Duke University and the Head of the uh, Alternating Hemiplegia of Childhood Program there. I am Jeff Wuchic. I am co-founder and president of Cure AHC, the uh, foundation that did fund this study and also a parent of a child with alternating hemiplegia of childhood. Uh, the, our study basically is uh, geared to uh, address the motor difficulties in uh, alternating hemiplegia. It's already known that patients with alternating hemiplegia have uh, motor difficulties, but uh, uh, the details of that uh, uh, is not known. Uh, so uh, uh, we looked at various uh, uh, um, uh, domains of motor function, gross motor function, fine motor function, uh, articulation, which, which is uh, with the expressive speech, and uh, also uh, swallowing. And we used multiple uh, um, tests in order to assess that and uh, in the slide that uh, uh, we uh, summarized our results in we found that uh, uh, with for the gross motor uh, skills uh, um, uh, there was uh, the majority of patients the, the highest uh, uh, number had only mild uh, uh, impairments or none uh, uh, the same thing for uh, mo fine motor skills with the two different scales we used uh, uh, and that's very important because patients with uh, uh, alternating hemiplegia, in between their spells, they have a fairly good function and they should not be shortchanged uh, and they, that should be capitalized on. We found that motor speech articulation is uh, more impaired. M the vast majority of patients had moderate to severe impairments and that is important because they understand better than they can express and again, they should not be shortchanged. Uh, um, and they should be dealt with as much as they understand, not as much as they talk. And we also found that uh, a fair uh, percentage of them, uh, more than one-third, have uh, 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 difficulty uh, with swallowing, uh, not usually major, but enough that you may want to change the uh, texture of uh, feeding for some of them and to guard against aspiration in some. So these uh, are uh, new findings that were not recognized before and they correlate with the pathophysiology also of the disorder because uh, the gene that causes most cases of alternating hemiplegia, ATP1A3, is expressed uh, mostly in brainstem motor nuclei that uh, uh, um, control uh, mouth movements and uh, swallowing. Uh, so it also made us understand better about the physiology of uh, this disorder. And as parents and caregivers, this will be important information uh, to use in terms of planning for uh, treatments such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and also uh, to arrange for individual education plans in school, nutrition guidelines, uh, feeding guidelines uh, with uh, schools and other uh, facilities in which uh, our children and adults with alternating hemiplegia will interact. Uh, so I know for me as a parent personally, for my son Matthew, this is valuable information to plan for his future. And this is, we feel this is an exciting advance in the understanding of uh, alternating hemiplegia and the capabilities of these kids.